So what's XML good for? A sensible markup language, um, you can think of it as sort of a combination of HTML and relational databases. And so let me talk about each one of those in turn. Uh, HTML, as you know, is a, is a markup language that you use to create web pages. Uh, in this very similar sense, XML can be thought of as a markup language that you use to create web pages, but a more sophisticated markup language. HTML and XML share the same syntax. I think we've talked about that before. XML has the same open bracket, close bracket, tag name, attribute name, uh, nesting as HTML has. So there's a lot that's very similar about HTML. HTML and XML are both sort of content rather than data related. You wouldn't really create an HTML document in order to represent, say, uh, customer interactions, you know, customer transactions. Really wouldn't make sense to put that in HTML. You'd put that somewhere else. On the other hand, to put a story with pictures and words and paragraphs and uh, narrative makes complete sense to put it in HTML as, does, as it does to put it in XML. Uh, let's see, you type into XML like you type into HTML. You open up the file, you put in the tags, you type in the content, and away you go. That's, it has a very similar outlook. Um, they're, both, they're both generally used in web applications, um, although HTML is pretty much exclusively used in web applications, and um, XML can be used in web applications. So they're similar in that way. Uh, unlike HTML, there's no fixed set of tags in XML. You make them up or you latch on to a set of tags that someone else has made up. So in a way, you can think of HTML as a set of tags that somebody made up, whereas XML, you get to do the making up. You get to create your own structure of tags. And that's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's a good thing because you can create any kind of tags you want. It's a bad thing because you have to create the tags and because you have to figure out what to do with each tag. HTML has a browser. The browser automatically interprets the HTML and puts out a web page. In XML, you, in effect, create the browser. You create the thing that interprets the tags that you create. So it's a lot harder. It's a lot more sophisticated, but it's a lot better for us, the architects of information. If you use HTML, you have to live with the structure that's given to you by the creators of HTML. If you use XML, you can create your own structure. You can, you can do whatever you want, but then you have the responsibility to make sure that what you do makes sense and works out. Uh, HTML really is just, uh, well, it, aside from CSS files and JavaScript files and that sort of thing, the content of, it, of HTML really comes in a single file, the HTML file. Whereas in XML, as we'll see, there are two other really big kinds of files that we study and learn about in order to work with XML, and that's schemas and transforms. So HTML has really that one file, the HTML file with everything in it. In XML, there are three files that have um, real big significance. The XML file, the schema that rules the XML file, and the transform that creates user-friendly uh, output from the XML file. Uh, let's see, okay. So I think the summary for that is that um, uh, XML, if you know HTML, you already know a lot about XML. I think that's the bottom line. There's, there, you'll find it a very similar language with the major exception that you may know a bunch of tags already in HTML. Well, you don't know any tags in XML because every tag is sort of uh, is new from, from the start. But we'll use tag names that will be suggestive of what the function is. However, XML goes way beyond HTML. HTML is a particular application for one output for web pages. And XML is really a general way of representing information. And one of those outputs could be web pages, but there could be many other outputs. OK, that's, that's part A of. Um, of, uh, of XML versus, uh, or, or how to understand XML as a sort of a kind of HTML. Let's look at it as also as a kind of database, and specifically in contrast to a relational database. I think it's fair to say that XML actually is a database by the wide definition of databases. The wide definition of databases is that it's a place for the, the, the creation, storage, and retrieval of information with very specific functionality that every database has to have. Every database has to be able to create a structure into which information is poured, so to allow you to create uh, the, the way that you want a kind of information represented. That's the first thing it has to do. It has to allow you to store that information in there. It has to allow you to form some sort of query to retrieve the information. It has to allow you to add new items of information into the structure that you've created, create new ones in usually called new records in database language. It has to be able to allow you to delete records that you've created otherwise or created earlier. And finally, it has to allow you to edit records that are in there already. So create information, retrieve information, update information, delete information. Those are, the, those are the big four. XML does all of those things. As we'll see as we go through in this class, 
an XML file really is a database in that literal sense of it allows you to create structure for your information, it allows you to store that information, retrieve that information, it even has its own query language, which we'll learn about later. Um, it allows you to create new, we won't call them records, we'll call them items, but the idea is the same, update existing items and delete items. So it's a database in, 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 that, in that exact sense. Now let's contrast it to a relational database. Because I think when most of you think of the word database, that's what you're thinking of. You're thinking of a relational database. A relational database is a particular implementation of those general concepts that I talked about before. Storage, retrieval, update, editing, and deleting. A relational database is a specific way of structuring. So the, the, the basic structure of a relational database is already set for you by the creators of the relational database. And the basic structure is each item of information will go in a row, basically, of a table. And Every row of every table has a certain set of fields, attributes, columns, there's various names for it, but the idea is really the same. We have an item of information, that item of information has separate qualities, each quality goes in a column, and I have row after row of the same columns, each item being structured the same. And one other thing, and that's what gives it the name relational, is that I can create a relationship between the row of one table and the row of another table. Now, if you haven't worked with relational databases, don't worry. The, you, you, this is not information that's going to make a difference in your work in this class. But I do want for the people who have studied relational databases to contrast XML with that. The big contrast, the way that we say XML is one kind of database and uh, Access or DB2 or MySQL or whatever is another kind of database, is that those kinds of databases that you're used to are relational. They have this table structure, table, row, 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 I'm mean, excuse me, row, 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 column, 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 with relationships from one row to another row. And that's what defines a larger information structure. In HTML, we use, excuse me, in, H, in XML, we have a database, but it's hierarchically structured. That means that it has parent, child, 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 and that's how all the different structures of information are created. So XML is a database in the very same sense that Access or SQL Server or MySQL or DB2 or Oracle or any of those databases are databases. It just has a different structuring than those databases. Okay, the final thing I want to do is contrast XML to Word to give you this feeling about what, Word, about what XML is good for. And the contrast I'd like to give you is the contrast between Word and Excel. When would you put something in Excel? When would you put it in Word? I think it's pretty clear that we would put something, for example, our phone book in Excel because it follows that table structure. Every row in Excel is an entry in my phone book and every phone book has a phone number, it has a fax number, it has a, maybe it has an email address, it has a, you know, a, it has a various handles for various social networking apps, et cetera, et cetera, right? And every, every contact in my, in my, in my um, contact database or in my uh, phone book is the same. Contrast that with a composition where I have some paragraphs, maybe some lists in that composition, some images put in there. I have different, uh, different forms of paragraphs with different styling. I may have inside of a paragraph. I may have bold and italic, et cetera, et cetera. And it's relatively freeform. And it's very different than the address book that you might put in Excel. It's not that every piece of information in my composition, or even that there are pieces that work that way, right, of, every, of a row uh, with various columns. It's very, very much more freeform, but it is still structured. Compositions can be in, incredibly structured with, uh, with strict rules about how you form paragraphs, how many sentences should be in a paragraph, or how many heading levels are allowed, or do we have to have an introduction or is the introduction optional? Lots and lots of structure there. It's not unstructured at all. It's very well structured, but it's a different kind of structure. And if you think about it, a composition has that hierarchical structure. It has headings and subheadings, like a book. We have the, the chap part, chapter, heading, subheading, paragraph, image, etc. And those are in a hierarchical structure, but they can be mixed and matched quite a bit more than, the row, than, the, than, the, than, than can be done in Excel. So here's a little thought experiment to give, you, um, to give you this idea of how information is structured in XML and how that's different than a relational database. Um, try putting an essay. Open up Excel and try to put an essay into Excel and see does it fit into that, me into that methodology? I think you'll see that it doesn't. Now open up Word and put, just put, type in a few entries from your address book in there. And you'll see that what you will immediately do is create a table, the table that works exactly like it does in Excel. Okay, so let's summarize here. How do I understand XML? What's XML good for? XML is good for representing information the same way that HTML is, and it's also good for representing information the same way that databases are. 
The difference between, X, uh, between XML and HTML is that HTML is a specific application. It's, de it's designed for creating web pages, whereas XML is a general application. You can design it to do anything you want. The difference between XML and relational databases is the same as the difference between Word and Excel. Word is good for compositions that have structure, but it's a different kind of structure. It's that hierarchical structure where really an outline is the thing that describes the structure of the information, and, ex and that's like XML. Excel is a row and column table kind of structure, and that's good for stuff like address books and transactions and you know, keeping track of large amounts of little bits and pieces of data. So XML is good for representing information in the same way that databases are and in the same way that, X that uh, HTML is, but it has a different structure than relational databases, and it goes beyond the, cap the capabilities of HTML.